Greetings, everyone. Today, I'd like to talk about the role of HMOs or human milk oligosaccharides in fighting pathogens. Before we talk about pathogens, let's talk about the various classifications of gut bacteria. There are four basic classifications, probiotic, commensal, pathobiont, and pathogenic. And the first two are largely, broadly speaking, anti-inflammatory, and the other two are broadly speaking, a pro-inflammatory. So uh, one is relatively good, one is rel relatively bad. But let's uh, get in some uh, rough definitions here so we understand. Probiotic uh, has a positive impact on the host, uh, produces as metabolites short-chain fatty acids such as butyrate, uh, neurotransmitter transmitters in general. It is immune regulating and boosting. Uh, you want a lot of probiotics such as uh, bifidobacteria, um, uh, fecal, fecal, fecal bacterium, prasnitsi, um, all that, all those good things. Commensal bacteria are essentially somewhere between positive to neutral impact. They uh, might be more like a probiotic, um, but they're not always necessarily uh, positive. So they get put into the commensal category. Pathobiont is somewhere between neutral and negative impact. Uh, they are opportunistic pathogens, meaning that uh, if the, the gut is leaky, uh, if there's some uh, issues there, the, these uh, bacteria will take advantage of that, that, that opportunity to uh, cause infection, cause more inflammation. So if you have a small amount in your gut, you know, it may not be a, a big deal, but if you have a lot, that could be uh, setting yourself up for for something worse. And then pathogenic, most of us are used to that uh, terminology. It has a negative impact, at disease causing, sometimes even to the point of, in the case of like uh, certain strains of E. coli, deadly toxins. Um, this is what causes uh, uh, sepsis and even uh, death from sepsis. So not all pathogenic bacteria are that dangerous, uh, but um, they are uh, have a negative impact upon the host. So now I want to talk about, because I'm going to show some testing, some before and after uh, results here about a pathobiont called Bacteroides vulgatus. Uh, and a uh, definition uh, from Ombre is that this bacteria is associated with insulin resistance, pro-inflammatory bacteria, increase in inflammatory cytokines associated with irritable bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, and gastrointestinal imbalances at high levels. Elevated levels in infants associated with celiac risk factors and autism. So again, it uh, can have a negative impact and especially uh, uh, the more you have, the more uh, potential negative impact it might have on the host. Couple of before and afters here. Uh, this is one person that I helped uh, test and his B. vulgatus went from 16% down to about uh, 1%, which is just remarkable. And by the way, the only thing that he was taking was uh, layer origins, pure HMO prebiotic powder. And the case with, with all of these results I want to show you is, it, uh, is to say that um, these are, uh, this is not proving that that HMO by itself lowered um, this, this uh, pathobiont. Um, can't prove that with a couple of data points, uh, but uh, when you take into account that in each case, uh, the, this was the only uh, supplement they were taking, and as, as I'll demonstrate, it's very likely uh, backed up by research to have been the main reason why. Uh, but I, I just I just want to give that disclaimer. Here's another person, a little less dramatic, but still uh, a decreased. A couple of more examples. Uh, this person went from, this is actually, this person is me, uh, went from a little over 9% down to 1%. And uh, this happens to be my wife's results. And she went from 12% down to 4%. So some pretty dramatic uh, changes there. And if you go back to the person with the biggest decrease in B. vulgatus, uh, his uh, formicutes uh, went up considerably, about 63% to 93%. Uh, so those are the gram positive, uh, non-inflammatory uh, bacteria. So um, that is also a positive thing. And something something you see a lot when you get 
um, you know, there, there is a, an epic battle, right, in, in, in the colon, uh, fighting for supremacy, uh, gut supremacy. And uh, often when you get a lot of good guys, uh, the bad guys decrease, which is exactly what we want. And then uh, one of these uh, people, similarly, another pathobiont is proteobacteria. And uh, proteobacteria are often overrepresented in several intestinal and extraintestinal diseases, mostly with an inflammatory phenotype. Well, again, just on pure HMO, they went from the 89th percentile down to the 10th percentile. So that's just more good news. Another way of looking at some results here, um, this is all from the same person. Now, these are pathogenic bacteria, and these charts are taken from biome site. So we have uh, Clostridium perfringens, and you see there on the right, far right, uh, a 0.003% is considered very high. Uh, well, this person was 0.4%, which works out to 130 times higher than what they recommend. But the after went down to absolutely zero. Uh, Citrobacter frundi went from 0.006%, so at, at the extreme far end, down to zero. And then last one, Escherichia, uh, that's uh, where E. coli comes from, uh, was at 0.5% and went down as the others, all the way down to 0%. So uh, when you're talking about eliminating your pathogens, even if they're uh, in small amounts, that is also more good news. So here are four ways that HMOs can fight pathogens and pathobionts both. So first of all, they increase good bacteria, and then they the good bacteria outcompete the pathogens. Uh, I've been talking about this a little bit already, but here's an example. This is from my last video on the uh, infant microbiome, and this particular infant had extremely high uh, B. This is Bac Bacteroides fragilis, as opposed to Bacteroides vulgatus. We've been talking about uh, on ombre all the way up to almost seventy percent. Uh, this is a uh, biome site information at 55 percent and was uh, as, as it went up uh, this uh, infant's bifidobacteria went down but then was given this uh, probiotic but it was really uh, he needed the boost from the probiotic no doubt about it but it's the hmos that boosted that uh, bifido all the way to 81 percent because this uh, this b infantis especially uh, voraciously consumes hmos uh, in this case, uh, in, in the breast milk, um, and just absolutely dramatic results. And uh, because bifido, uh, the metabolite, one of the metabolites is lactic acid, lowers the pH in the colon, which uh, is a, a, not a good thing for the B fragilis and just absolutely decimated it. So here, there's one way that HMOs um, can eliminate pathogens by out competing them with good bacteria. Secondly, HMOs rinse the digestive tract and prevent pathogens from adhering. Here's a research paper, soluble fucosylated human milk oligosaccharides passing through the newborn's digestive tract, rinse the epithelial cells of the throat, esophagus, and intestines of the newborn. So they prevent them from adhering to these. They just pass out um, uh, through the colon harmlessly. Uh, so that's the second way. Third way, uh, the HMOs increase the cell wall permeability of some pathogens. Here's an example. Uh, we discovered that HMOs possess antimicrobial activity against group B streptococcus GBS by increasing cellular perme permeability. Uh, GBS is one uh, bacteria they watch very closely during uh, births of children. And uh, that can be if the mother is a carrier can be passed on to the baby with uh, very um, uh, life-threatening, uh, It's in, in some cases, uh, life-threatening consequences. So that's one they, they're very careful in watching. Uh, and HMOs uh, are, are antimicrobial, antibacterial. Uh, I'm not sure if this uh, could relate to other um, uh, bacteria. It might have the same impact on that but uh, it's good that it works on GBS. And then finally, HMOs bind enter enterotoxin and neutralize it. And then one last research paper, fucosylated oligosaccharides are decoy receptors for many pathogenic bacteria, including mem members of enterobacteria. Hence, they have a potential to reduce their adhesion to the gut, thus protecting the infant. So we talked about that sort of rinsing through. 
In addition, fucosylated HMOs bind enterotoxin produced by E. coli and inhibits its effects on intestinal cells and reduce LPS, lipopolysaccharide induced inflammation and gut epithelium. Fucosylated HMOs may thus reduce the colonization ability of enterobacteria as well as their inflammatory effects in the infant gut, particularly among prematurely born infants. And those are the most um, uh, uh, watched infants. Uh, they're the most uh, in, in, in immun immunocompromised state and more likely to develop a leaky gut and infections uh, and worse um, from that. So that is the four ways that HMO can help fight pathogens. And whether and that, of course, is true whether it comes from, from breast milk or if you are supplementing with uh, Layer Origins Pure HMO Prebiotic Powder. Um, you know, no, no guarantees, of course, that this is going to eliminate all your pathogens. But uh, here's some good testing that I showed you that uh, I believe uh, demonstrates uh, the impact it can have. So thanks so much for watching.